Welcome to the Dynon Channel, your video source for information, education, and training on Dynon Avionics' industry-leading line of integrated avionics for experimental amateur-built and light sport aircraft. Today's topic, Skyview System, creating user-defined waypoints. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate how to create user waypoints in Skyview's uh, moving map system. Now to start with, I'm going to switch us to the map submenu in Skyview. We're currently looking at Skyview's main menu, button 1 labeled PFD. I'm going to press button 3, map. And here we are, here we are on the uh, map submenu. Now, uh, let's assume that I want to create a user waypoint located near the corner of this airspace I'm pointing to. Uh, let's pretend I have a friend who has some property there and I want to fly over it. I'm going to put the map into the panning mode by using the joystick action. Of course, if you had a touch screen, you could do that even e more easily, but I'm focusing on the button and knob controls for this video. So I'm positioning my cursor right near the corner of that airspace. That's where I think the property is, and I want to create a new waypoint at that location. To do that, I need to select button 7 from Map Menu. I'll press that now, and notice that I have a couple options here in this second group. Add point to flight plan or create user waypoint. Both of those uh, will take me through the process of creating a new user waypoint in Skyview's database. The first option would add that point directly to my flight plan as if I were going to navigate directly there. Uh, but for our purposes they're both interchangeable for now. So I'm going to highlight create waypoint. Notice the caret says I need to make a selection by clicking the joystick to the right. The first point is uh, the identifier. This is the ID that will appear on the map to identify that waypoint. And I'm going to choose something very brief. I'm going to put in the abbreviation FRND. F-R-N-D to denote the location of my friend's property. And I'm going to get get rid of the rest of the characters, the briefer the identifier, the less cluttered it will be on the map. Secondly, I could put in a more complete name. Uh, maybe uh, my friend that lives there, his name is Joe. So let's put his name in here. I could put his full name, Joe Johnson. The name will not appear on the map itself. It will only appear in the database when you're looking at user waypoints. Down below you can see we have the option if we chose to manually edit the latitude and longitude. The next option here is, lets me define an altitude. Now this is reference only. The Skyview Autopilot does not currently uh, follow these VFR reference altitudes that you manually enter. Uh, you might see some use of those in the future, but they do serve as a uh, visual reminder of an altitude that you want to designate, either the altitude of the waypoint itself or maybe a, a, a quote pattern altitude that you might want to be at when you're above that waypoint. And then finally, when I move my cursor down to the item labeled icon, I have the option by rotating the knob of scrolling through a whole list of predefined uh, icons to locate that uh, waypoint on the map. I'm going to choose this blue arrow for my new waypoint here. And then finally, I press button 7 that says Save. And now that waypoint appears on my map. you notice it has my icon and the map ID that I defined. So uh, that's the new waypoint. As I zoom out, you'll see that the waypoint stays there. If I pan away from it, it stays located on my map. Now, I want to point out that I can l navigate to that waypoint just like any other waypoint I might add to my flight plan. How might I do that? Well, let's move my cursor back in the vicinity. If I choose my nearest list, and at the cross the top, I want to cursor over to the list of user waypoints I've created. And notice, since I'm in the panning mode, my new waypoint is nearest to my cursor. It's right at the top of the list. If I wanted to go there, I could simply press button 2 for direct 2, and that waypoint becomes my flight plan. I'll jump into the flight plan real quickly, and you'll see there's my flight plan, a single waypoint going to that new uh, location I just defined. Now I'd like to demonstrate for you a very special purpose, a practical application for, for creating and using user-defined waypoints. 
a good example of that is a VFR crossing corridor. I live very close to SeaTac Airport in Seattle, a large Class Bravo airspace. And like many large airports, they have predefined VFR crossing corridors. You'll find those depicted only on the sectional map. It's not information that we portray on the computer-generated map in our Skyview system. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And we're here at Painfield, which is north of Seattle. I'm going to pan my map my cursor down into the vicinity of SeaTac Airport. And there you can see the symbol. Now I need to show the sectional layer in order to uh, complete this demonstration. So pressing the Layers button on the Map menu, I'm going to turn on the sectional, which is button 3, SEC. Uh, there we go. We have a sectional view. And as I pan out here a little bit, these magenta arrows define that crossing VFR crossing corridor over SeaTac Airport. And uh, so my objective today is to create user waypoints that I can use to navigate through that crossing corridor. To do that, I'm going to position my cursor to the west here at what I would consider the entry point for the west end of this VFR crossing corridor. So I'm positioned there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And let's assume I want to create a user way to user-defined waypoint at that location. I need to go back to the map menu and here we are at the main map submenu and button 7 now labeled map menu. Selecting that, you saw me do this earlier, I'm going to create a user waypoint. Click my knob to the right and I'm going to call this waypoint SEA for Seattle SEA I'm going to create a space, and then I'm going to put in the character W to denote west. So that'll be my westernmost point on this crossing corridor. And for my purposes, I don't care about the longer name. I'm going to leave the gray flag down here as the icon, and I'm simply going to save that waypoint. And hopefully you can see that up here, uh, right there at my cursor. I'll move the cursor away, and there it is. SEAW. Next, I'm going to pan over to the midpoint of the crossing corridor, which would be right over the middle of SeaTac Airport, so right in there. And I'm going to create another waypoint. Map menu, create waypoint. And what do you think we're going to call this? We're going to call this SEAM for middle. Oop, there we go. SEA. I'm pretty slow on uh, rotating the knob here, but uh, bear with me. There's the letter M, Mike, which stands for middle. I'll zero out these. There we are. There's my waypoint. I'll leave that gray icon and press the Save button. And If we uh, zoom in a little bit, you can see that icon right here, S-E-A-M. And then lastly, I'm going to notice that there's a bend in this crossing corridor. That's why I needed to put a midpoint in there. Some crossing corridors are a straight path, and you could get by with uh, uh, two endpoints. In my case, here we are at the right end or the eastern end of this corridor. I'm going to create a third menu, create user waypoint, and of course we're going to call this SEAE for east. Just about there. And again, I'll skip the name. We'll save that waypoint. And there you see it on my map. So now, how do I create a route uh, that lets me go uh, from my current position to fly that corridor? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm back to the Skyview's map menu. I'm going to choose my flight plan. And I'm going to use the flight plan menu button to delete this whole flight plan, clear flight plan. Clicking to the right, OK. I have an empty flight plan. Now, I said I wanted to start at my current position. Let's make sure that I'm uh, centered on my airport here. AM. So if I press the nearest button, here's my airport location, Payne Field, and I'm going to add that to my flight plan. Now, let's assume I want to fly to Seattle, and I want to enter on the west side of that crossing corridor. I need to look at my nearest list, and at the top, I'm going to scroll across using the uh, joystick function to get to the user tab 
and I'm going to look at the nearest waypoints, and down below we'll see the names of those that I just created. I said I want to enter on the west side, so I'm going to use the SEA West waypoint I created. I'll add that to the flight plan. I confirm that that's the location I want it in. Next, let's go back to the nearest page again. User waypoints, I'll go down to SEAM, which was the midpoint of my crossing corridor. Add the flight plan, confirm that I add it there. And once more to my nearest list, over to user waypoints, scrolling down to SEAE for the east endpoint of my corridor. Add the flight plan, confirm that location. And you can see that my flight plan has initiated the leg from my current airport to that first uh, waypoint on that crossing corridor. When I press the exit button, switch my map back to the north view and scroll out, now you can see a little bit of where that route's going to go. Let me switch back to the, s the uh, terrain map view instead of the, the sectional, and you can see this is the reason I don't fly regularly with the sectional view because it's so cluttered. Pressing the layer men uh, menu button, turning on the terrain map, that looks a little better. Uh, so again, I'll pan up so that you can see. Here's my starting point at Payne Field. As I scroll down in the vicinity of SeaTac Airport and scroll out a little bit, there's my crossing corridor. We don't see the corridor boundaries themselves depicted that you would see on a sectional, but because I created waypoints, I know that that path will take me down the middle of that crossing corridor. So that's just one uh, a real life example of how you might use waypoints that you define yourself to increase the functionality of the Skyview Navigator. Thanks for joining and look for more videos in this series. For more information on planning or capabilities of the Skyview system, please see our website at dynonavionics.com where you can find links to our system installation guides, pilot user guides, and other valuable information like our user form. Thank you for watching the Dynon channel.